Hey everyone, today I want to talk about chests. Treasure chests, uh, fancy boxes with items inside. They're a staple of the Kingdom Hearts series, appearing in almost every game, so let's take a look at them. First of all, I'm gonna simp for Cage 1 a bit here, what else did you expect? But I love how mysterious the chests in Cage 1 are. Many of them don't appear until you perform some action, whether that's from a trinity or something more abstract like hitting the hotel clock, putting out the Olympus flames, or defeating a round of enemies in the rabbit hole. And indeed, they mysteriously disappear when opened, giving them a very magical presence. That's classic Cage 1, everything feels a bit more magical and less mundane. As far as designs go, there are three types of chest, red, blue, and green. These are consistent throughout all of the worlds, which promotes the idea of the worlds being connected in some way. First we have the default chests. The red and blue chests are found in Traverse Town, and also in Twilight Town in Chain of Memories. Yeah, we can't forget about Recom. It uses red chests for bounties, and the first treasure from the Room of Rewards, and the second set of rewards uses the blue chest, which furthers the idea of a blue chest being kind of like an upgraded red chest. Destiny Islands in Cage 1 is home to one lone green chest with a protect chain. This was missing on the cage wiki, so I had to get my own picture, and it's hard to get a good angle in that cramped space. Otherwise, most of these images come from the wiki. The red chests are pretty standard European-style treasure chests, rectangular with a domed lid. The blue chests are very similar, but feature a keyhole on the lid for some extra flair, I suppose. And then there's the green chests. These are square-shaped with pointed pyramid lids. All three chests have a trim or frame. Usually it's gold, but the colour tones and textures of chests vary by world. For these ones, the material is smooth with no apparent texture, giving it a solid, metallic appearance. Wonderland features a squiggly pattern because, you know, ooh, Wonderland is wacky! The blue chest keyhole is actually quite turquoise here. In Olympus, these ones have a marbly texture, very fitting for the world. It especially makes me think of the steps in the Colosseum. I like this, it's a subtle way of matching the world. Then, Deep Jungle, the Forgotten World, it only has red chests. They have a dirty and dull appearance. Look at that bronze trim and the stained lid. Well, if you sit in a jungle for ages, yeah, you'll probably get dirty. Agraba fares better, as you'd expect from a world with the Cave of Wonders in it. These chests are similar to the defaults, but somewhat darker tones and they're slightly worn. Next we have the design used for Monstro and also repurposed for Destiny Islands in Recon. This one features a duller gold trim and wooden texture, which fits nicely with all the wooden structures inside Monstro, and of course on the island. Now, Atlantica mostly uses clamshells for its treasures. You have the pale pink, red, blue, and yellow clams, and those react to physical, fire, blizzard, and thunder attacks respectively. There's also this big treasure chest blocking the hole next to Ariel's grotto. You can dislodge this from underneath and open a shortcut between the gorge and the sunken ship. Inside this is an Arcalcum. Back to actual chests, Atlantica may not have many, but it does feature all three types, thanks to Ariel's collection and the sunken ship. These are all filtered blue to fit in with the world nicely, and they look extremely grungy, as they should from being under the sea. Halloween Town next. These are the darkest of all the chests, and they're very roughly textured, and just like the world's heartless. The trim varies between the colours on this set, going from uh, blue and dull gold to red and beige. Neverland's chests are pretty similar to those of Olympus, but a tad bit darker and more worn down. Hollow Bastion's chests have an old, very worn look. Kind of like Halloween Town's, but not as dark. It's more like faded and forgotten. Very fitting for the old crumbling castle. Hundred Acre Wood is next, and there's no blue chests here, so these two have a wooden texture, but somewhat uh, grottier than those of Destiny Islands and Monstro. That frame could do with the polish. And lastly for Cage 1 we have End of the World. These chests are shiny, metallic, and have bold base colours, but dull frames. They're quite cool I think, uh, there's even a grand and ancient feeling about them. The blue chest's keyhole, you could even say it glows. Very special chests for the final level. And then there's Recom. Of course it reuses chest designs from Cage 1, but there is a new variant for the Castle Oblivion floor. These have a glowing neon look. The base colours are now grey, with pink and blue highlights. Pretty cool extensions of the Cage 1 designs for the enigmatic and unnatural Castle Oblivion. 
So, that's the original Kingdom Hearts chest designs covered. Now we move on to the newer style, which, like many aspects of this series, was started by Cage 2 and has stuck ever since. Chests from Cage 2 onwards usually have two types, small and big. The shapes are consistent throughout almost all of the worlds. Each world now has a much more overt influence on the chest designs, rather than it being subtle texture differences. Also, chests don't really have any special ways of appearing, they're usually just sat in plain sight, only occasionally making you go out of your way to reach them, plus they stick around after opening, and they track in each game's related journal. Let's start with the most basic of chest designs, this small red chest and large blue chest. These are the defaults, and so you'll find them in all of these worlds. They actually follow a similar principle from Cage 1, with the blue being a superior chest over red. The red chest has a simple trim, while the blue is more elaborate, even having red lines around each side. Large chests quite often hold maps, so most of them are disappointing, despite this fancy look. Also similar to Cage 1 are some texture variations on these basic types. In BBS, the Land of Departure has a somewhat pink coloration, rather than the standard red chest you see in Raiding Garden, for example. And then the Realm of Darkness has a very dull and faded colour scheme, to fit with that depressing place. Uh, sorry for the low-res pick on this one, I had to screenshot a YouTube video. Here's the chests from the Keyblade Graveyard, all battered and crusty. Cage 3 does the same thing actually, but with updated textures. In fact, we may as well see Cage 3's updated default chests too, so here you go. Now, let's go through every other chest design, game by game, world by world. Land of Dragons, appropriately red and gold like the palace. Beast's Castle has a lovely stained glass texture. There's a single rose on the small chest and multiple on the large with their stems. Olympus goes for a green and gold design with very appropriate lightning bolts and an Olympus stone-like circle pattern on top. Disney Castle has blue designs with plenty of fleur-de-lis. Timeless River has similar patterns, but of course in grayscale. Port Royals are wooden with the medallion on top and cutlasses on the large chest. Agrabahs have a very intricate pattern, quite fancy indeed. It's violet for the small chest and indigo for the large. Halloween Town has a dark, spooky purple with plenty of bones, and just look at how scratched up that frame is. The Skull and Pumpkin are very Halloween-y, but also referencing Jack Skellington and his title of The Pumpkin King. Christmas Town's chests are as festive as you like. The small one is a Christmassy red, plus green and white candy canes, and the large chest is quite different, with a cheery purple and a little bell on top. Pride Lands is actually a special case because the chests here are shaped like fruit, right up to the stalk on top. They're orange and patterned, most notably with that sun symbol on the top side. A Hundred Acre Wood once again has wooden chests, even the trim is wood this time. Plus some green and orange flowery bits. Space Paranoids have drastically different designs from one another. The small chest is grey and green, with a grid design alluding to the game grid. The large chest is much more striking, with a red circuitry pattern. And here's some footage of their pretty cool, flowing, glowing, animated textures. The world that never was has very futuristic and thematic blue and grey chests, with triangular pointy shapes, and they have the glow effect as well, but this time it pulses in and out. The Garden of Assemblage has the same large chest, but it's recoloured greyer to fit in. Now, to quickly address 358 Days of a Stupid Title, it reuses worlds, and almost all of them already have established chest designs thanks to Cage 2, just that they're boxy DS versions. However, Wonderland is in the game too, so here's the large chest of Wonderland. It's red and gold with a clock on top, naturally. I don't see any pictures of a small chest, so I guess Days just has large chests. And I didn't see anything for Neverland either, but I don't know, I've never played it, so let me know if there is something missing here. I have played BBS though, so let's look at its chest now. Enchanted Dominion has the iconic thorns, and a little shield heraldry crest on top. The large chests in BBS are always more elaborate versions of the same idea. Dwarf Woodlands is wooden, obviously, and has a white and red flower on top. The Castle of Dreams is quite a sleek design. That blue and white looks pretty great and appropriate for the world, and the pink cards on the large chest is a nice touch. You can also see the pumpkin carriage there on the lid. Disney Town is unmistakable with the classic Mickey emblem. 
The one on the last chest is quite oval though, <laughs> it makes me think of Arthur of all things. There's also some stars and way too many bright colours, because of course it's Disney Town, the most offensively whimsical world in the series. Deep Space has a blue alien design with rounded shapes and green circles. BBS has a lot of blue chests actually, and to be fair that is the game's theme colour. Then Neverland contributes to the pirate chest club with these wooden designs. You've got swords, a skull and crossbones on the large chest, and I like the brass pins. It's worth mentioning the spider chests, uh, they simply mimic the large chests of the world they're in, before turning into their usual selves if you try and open them. And of course I covered their creature designs back in the Unversed video. Dream Drop Distance now, we've already seen Traverse Town in the world that never was, which means we're left with only 5 worlds worth of unique chests. Starting with La Cité de Cloche, quite intricate designs here. The arches represent the cathedral very nicely, and there's lots of trefoils and catrefoils, which are those interlocking circle shapes, often found in Christian symbolism. The grid is here with its futuristic cyberspace designs, very geometric, there's hexagons and neon blue lines, just like the world itself, less colourful and more boring than space paranoids. Then we have Prankster's Paradise. The chest images on the wiki have file names beginning with PP large and PP small, so make a joke with that if you want. Regardless of size, these are the opposite of the grid in that they're so full of colour, it's enough to give me a headache. The red and white honestly makes me think of candy canes of Christmas, but the spokes on top are definitely representing the ferris wheel. And uh, on the large chest, the red and white centre kind of looks like a trampoline. Country of the Musketeers dials things back a bit with these blue and gold chests. The fleur de lis dominates this design. After all, miss, this is France. And, uh, well, Paris World didn't get any. I like the patterned trim and the silver keyhole on the large chest. Finally, for DDD, is Symphony of Sorcery. One of the weirdest worlds in Kingdom Hearts, and the chests are very appropriate. It's musical notation. Lots of quavers or eighth notes. Uh, a beam semi-quaver, I think, on the small chest. A big old G clef on the large chest. In fact, you can even see the staff, or stave if we're being British, those blue lines behind the notes. The large chest reminds me of the default type with that red on the trim. Sadly, I can't avoid talking about Union Cross forever, so here we go. This game actually has three sizes of chest, small, medium and large. Here's the orange and green chests, you can see how the patterns get more intricate as they get larger. Kind of like how the keyblades in this game could upgrade. I gotta say could because it's over now, isn't it? The small chests have the same pattern as the regular small chest, while the larger ones are similar but not the same as the blue large chests we saw in the other games. We also have actual red chests, although the large chest here is purple. Interesting. Then there's a lone medium blue chest. I don't know why this is. It's Union Cross, so most things are a mystery to me. And then we have these special event chests. Christmas ones with holly berries and one star. The second anniversary chests with two stars for both. And the summer event, which is watermelon themed. And at last we've arrived at Cage 3. There were no images for these chests on the wiki, so I went and got them myself. I've already shown the original world designs, so this is all Disney now. First up, Olympus. The small chest is green again, and I like the stone texture on the trim. The large chest opts for red with lightning bolts, and another vague Olympus stone on top. You can also see those curly Olympus clouds on both. Toy Box features a consistent playful design across both chests. The stars, with a blue background pattern, is obviously representative of Andy's wallpaper. Cage 3 is set after Toy Story 2, so it's Andy's second house, rather than his first house with the cloud wallpaper. The large chest has a big gold star radiating beams of light, and the trim for these is made out of interlocking segments, like puzzle pieces or building blocks. Especially the latter actually, uh, just look at that castle shape around the keyhole. In Kingdom of Corona, we're back to two different colours. Another green small chest, Cage 3 likes those, with the kingdom's iconic golden flower on top. And the larger chest, well that's pink with a dark wood frame, even a vague heart shape above the keyhole. Monstropolis has industrial metallic chests with thick grey frames. The designs are pretty simple on the whole, with the standout feature being that glowing nub on the top. You can see horns and jagged shapes to represent the monsters. Arendelle has exactly what you'd expect. Icy blue and white colours and snowflake designs. The diamond patterns are very Arendelle as well. 
Oh, more pirate chests, yay. These ones are the most uh, grown up and elegant. Wooden, brassy, and dominated by that ship's wheel design. The large chest has some bolder colours, plus a bony spine design running over the lid. I like this a lot. This is the kind of chest I'd put my rum in and keep in the corner of a room with maps on the walls and one of those spinning globes. That'd be a cool room. There's also some small underwater treasure chests you can hit to open. They usually give gold, sometimes a synth item. And our very last chests now are from San Francisco. A little yellow and green number with some kind of white grill, and the large chest which is clearly Baymax inspired. They're quite shiny. If chests were superheroes, I guess they would be gaudy like this. And there we have it, all of the chest designs in Kingdom Hearts. A bit of a trivial exercise maybe, but I did want to showcase how Cage 1 and Recom differed from the rest of the games, and I thought I may as well point out some small details at the same time. Comment below with your favourite chest design or whatever. Thanks for watching, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.